Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato on today's Everything Music. It's What Makes a Song Great, episode 68. The band is Slipknot and the song is Duality. Coming up next. Duality was the first single off Slipknot's 2004 release, Volume 3, The Subliminal Verses. The song was co-written by all the band members and produced by Rick Rubin. Slipknot's sound runs the gamut of metal. You call it heavy metal, alternative metal, new metal, progressive metal. really depends on the song. Funny story, when I was in L.A. in 1999, I was working at a studio called NRG, and I met Joey Jordanson in the lounge at the studio and he was telling me about that they were working on a couple songs for their new record which was Slipknot's first album. I actually didn't hear anything from the band. I didn't walk into the studio where they were working but when that record came out and blew up I thought wow this guy's a great drummer too. As a matter of fact I have my trusty Joy Jordanson snare right here. I always love their snare sound so I bought his signature snare. At Pearl made it back then. I don't think they make it anymore, but it's a killer sounding 13 by six and a half snare. So out of my 68 episodes, I've done almost no new metal. Slipknot is the first band, although like I said, I don't really consider them necessarily a full-on new metal band because they have a lot of other influences. But like many new metal bands, Slipknot tunes down to a drop B. So that's was really a characteristic of that genre that I think carried over even to today's progressive metal scene and people moving from six string to seven string to eight string guitars. I think that's kind of been a lasting effect of new metal is the down tuning of it and the heaviness of it. So let's talk about this opening riff here. I push my fingers into my mind. So along with Corey Taylor's lo-fi vocal, you have... And along with that, kind of hidden in the background a little bit is a piano organ part that goes along with it. Let's check it out. Then the guitar by itself. Uh. And then... I want to isolate the left and right guitar so you can hear the pinch harmonics that happen because they're different ones in different speakers. Let's check them out. Let me solo the guitars. Okay, so the left speaker's got this. And the right speaker has this. It's great together, listen. There, I love the vibrato on that one, especially in the left speaker. Listen. Woo! Here again. And then the right speaker. So there's two different pinch harmonics with the heavy vibrato give it a really insane intensity. Let's listen on. Right there, I love the chug that they do right before the next section. Gong, gong, gong. Uh -oh. One thing I want to point out is just like in the Metallica video, the Megadeth video, we have this flat two sound, right? That flat two is the sound of metal because it pulls you down to the tonic, especially when you're tuned down to that low B. I want to mention here, I'm playing through an orange Rocker Verb 100 
Mark III, which is the same amp that Jim Root plays through, even though he plays through the Rocker Verb Mark I, I think he has one and two he was playing through with the band back, uh, you know, five years ago or so. I'm not sure what he was playing through on the record, but this particular amp has a lot of gain and is great for metal. Another great element of this section is this that's happening in the turntable. Listen. That really adds so much to the guitars, even if you can't hear it clearly. Let me play that with the guitars. Listen. It's hard to hear, but it's in there, and those little bends that are happening, the all the pitch bends and things, add to the, the, the vibe of that guitar part. So let's talk about the drum build that happens here. So you got this. Now this is actually a combination of the percussion and the drums being played at the same time. Check it out. Heavy. I love that snare fill that Joy Jordanson plays because it leads into the dun 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 riff. Check it out. And then we have the clown which hits the beer keg which gives it that sound. I think he hits it with an aluminum bat. At least he does live here. Let's check out the bass next. And let's solo the vocals so we can hear what they sound like. I push my fingers into my thighs. It's the only thing that slowly stops the ache. But it's made of all the things I have to take. Jesus, it never ends. It works its way inside. I love how they keep the lo-fi vocal in there for continuity during that whole intro section. I think it really ties it together and when you hear the actual sung vocal come over it, it just gives it that extra power but that scream that happens together is unbelievable. Let's do it. <laughs> Next we have the verse riff which is a fast single note line that goes right along with the fast moving verse vocals. Check it out. It goes like this. Halfway through this verse, there's a second guitar that joins in that plays, well, I wouldn't really call it a harmony part, but it's kind of an odd part that goes with it. Let's check it out. When the bass enters, it actually plays something slightly different that I think makes the riff even cooler. Let's listen to the bass and the rhythm guitars together soloed. That's the late Paul Gray on bass. So his bass part there, he starts on this high of sharp. The bass playing longer notes gives the guitar more clarity because the guitar, when it's playing 16th notes, sometimes it takes the string a second to react when you're moving really quickly. Let's check out the verse drums. I love this drum part. Listen to the double kicks. Let me play the drums and bass together so you really get a feel for how good the rhythm section is. Check it out.
What I love about it is that it's not perfect. It really has feel to it. The drums are really on top of the beat. The bass is kind of holding back a little bit. And it has this intensity to it that it wouldn't have if it, if it was just metronomic and done to death like a lot of records were at that time. Another thing that makes the song great are the verse vocals. I'm talking this part. I love the lo-fi feel of it and the way that it's sung. Let's listen to it. I have screamed until my veins collapsed. I've waited as my time's elapsed. Now all I do is live with so much fate. I've wished for this. I've bitched at that. I've left behind this little fact. You cannot kill what you did not create. Check out the turntable part on this line. You cannot kill what you did not create. I'll solo it. Listen. All those little things add up in the mix. You may not hear them, but they're there and they're adding to the vibe. They're adding to the rhythmic propulsion of these sections. Another thing that makes the song great is this pre-chorus. It just is one chord, but it has this killer drum fill that goes into it. Listen. <laughs> Listen to the drum fill that happens right before the snare fill. It's great. I love those kind of do do de do 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 de do 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 They're just so heavy. Listen. And then we're into the chorus. It's the only thing that slowly stops the ache. If the pain goes on, I'm not gonna make it. Out of this chorus, there's a little interlude with an extra tag that only happens in this one spot. Check it out. Right here. First. The second verse is very similar to the first. When we get to the second chorus, we have some really cool things that enter. Let's check this out. Let's go into Pro Tools and check this out. So here's the beginning of the second chorus. There's this organ part that comes in here. Listen. Then there's a second line that comes in halfway through the chorus. Then we're on to the bridge. So the bridge is over the jump, 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 jig it down, jig it down, down, riff part. There's a lot of cool percussion things that happens in there. Let's go into Pro Tools. And I'm going to solo some of the parts so that you can hear what's going on. Let's check it out. And then we're back to the pre-chorus riff. And then we're into a variation of the pre-chorus that descends down and has a break that the scream fills. Check it out. There's a lot of really cool arrangemental things that are happening in the out chorus here. Let's check it out. (laughs) 
Love that. Listen to it again. Prayer. Oh, awesome. Listen to the guitars. They pull back just a little bit at the end of that triplet lick. Listen. Prayer. So it's like dun dun dun. Uh, uh, uh. That little pause makes that section so much more intense because it's not on grid. All of God. All of God is insane. All of God. All of God is insane. All of God. All of God is insane. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're a new subscriber, remember to ring the bell. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. And if you want to support the channel even more and I can use the support, check out the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching.